Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Hey guys, I hope you're having a wonderful day. I have a few announcements to make. The first thing I wanted to mention though is that I felt more normal than I have in weeks today. I got up and I swept and mopped my bathroom and I swept and mopped my kitchen and I was able to sweep my living room and dining room. I made food for my kid. I watched TV with him for a while or well Netflix. Talked to my other kid on the phone for an hour. Planned my future and even took a few moments to enjoy an incredibly beautiful sky. Since we have gone up into the fifth dimension, and I know I've been solidly here now for about a month because I feel my vibration. I feel it high, high vibrating always at a higher level. I have noticed that the skies here, I mean, they used to just look normal. And sometimes there'd be a weird cloud where you go, whoa, what's that? (laughs) Is that a UFO? What happened there? That doesn't sound right there's something a glitch in the matrix right every now and again but now that i'm up there in the fifth dimension all the time every day i kid you not looks like buck rogers in the 21st century i don't know if you guys saw that um that movie from the 70s it's kind of cheesy but there was this sky in that movie where the clouds are puffy and white and they're kind of outlined like the way a kid can outline clouds if he was going to draw them. And the sky was so like pink, peachy, orangey, pinkish kind of color. And every day my sky has been looking like this at the end of the day. And not just the sunset, but the sky itself. Even after the sun goes down and there's no more rays, it's just the color of the sky is that color. And today, the sky was like a baby blue and turquoise and this pink, and it was like in stripes. And it made no sense that it was there because there was no clouds. Well, there were puffy clouds, but there weren't like long streaky clouds. It was just the sky was literally just pink. (laughs) I don't know what to make of it, but it was so beautiful. And I'm really grateful about it. Got a visit from Fred and Ethel Mertz, my neighbors. That's what I call them. They're pigeons. (laughs) And um, I got to feed them today and... They were really happy to watch us make uh, coffee this morning. It was just a good day. It was overall really a good day. So I look up the Schumann Resonance to think, well, maybe we were spiking again. And But I didn't have any symptoms today. First time in almost two weeks that I had zero ascension symptoms. Pain in my back, but that was there before the ascension started. So, yeah. But uh, I just... I was really astounded because in the last 11 days, well, not counting today, so 11 days before today, every stinking day we had massive downloads coming our way, massive peaks in the Schumann Resonance. So, I mean, for thousands of years, we're at 7.83 hertz, and suddenly we are spiking above 100. (laughs) Like yesterday, It went above a hundred. I was really, really, really blown away by that. And then we had one day for 24 solid hours on the 17th of February, 24 solid hours of above 40 Hertz. In fact, it was hovering around 67 to 69 Hertz frequency is a vibration of the planet. And because of the vibrations coming, um, in bombarding the magnetosphere from the sun. So we're getting it as above, so below, as below, so above. We're getting it from all angles. And that means that we're going to vibrate at that rate or higher because we're like tuning forks. When you put one tuning fork next to another and then you strike it, that second tuning fork 
eventually is going to vibrate at the same rate. And we do the same thing as humans. We vibrate with the planet. But today was the first day in almost two weeks that we had zero activity. And uh, it just, it was nice to have a break. I enjoy the fifth dimension. I'm glad I'm vibrating in it right now. But I just felt like I needed a break from the bombardment of the energy. This is the first day that I didn't feel like tired or bloated or like I'm going to pass out at any moment. My allergies, as you can tell, are not nearly as bad as they were. Although I I discovered that part of my allergies, uh, it was not only ascension symptoms. I finally located a source of mold in my house and ironically it was in my trash, my trash bin in my bathroom and I had a plastic lining in there and two plastic linings underneath. And I had washed the whole thing out with bleach and I had sprayed it with Lysol. So there never should have been anything in there. I think it was in one of the bags or something. Anyway, today my whole house started to smell from this. I finally was able to locate it because of the smell. And I'm like, oh my God. And I had played the right frequency to get rid of mold in my bathroom just in case because I'm always worried about this. <laughs> you know, having asthma and allergies my whole life, it's a concern. Well, got rid of that. I feel great. I feel so much better. My house smells good. And overall, it was just a very normal day. And I hadn't had a normal day in a long time. So for that, I am grateful. There are a couple pieces of uh, disheartening news, but I don't want it to dishearten you because... You all know where we're going. We're going up, up, up to the fifth dimension. And the third dimensional world eventually will fall away, much like a second rocket booster (laughs) as we rocket ship towards the fifth dimension and above and beyond. Um, The first thing is I just, I don't want to talk about it too much, but please pray for Venezuela. I love Venezuela. Uh, At least the people I've met from there have been remarkably intelligent, educated, um, fun-loving, just beautiful, loving, big-hearted people with hilarious sayings and jokes and a great sense of humor and resiliency, which is what they have needed to have gone through what they've gone through for the past two to three years under the dictatorship rule of the current president. Well, dictator, not president. So Colombia has closed its borders to Venezuela. Venezuelans cannot any longer cross through Colombia. And I don't even want to talk about what this might possibly mean for the people that are left. The majority of the people left in the country are young children and grandmothers. So, I don't know. I mean, a bag of rice last I heard a year ago, I heard was a thousand dollars for a small bag of rice. And all of there's like no food in any of the stores. People cannot grow food or they go to jail. They can't even raise chickens or any livestock. It was all taken away. So, I'm very scared for the people there. I don't want to even consider all of the atrocities they're going through. But as a collective whole, I'm asking that we just give them love and light and just give them the energy and the strength and pray that God sends thousands and thousands and thousands of angels to surround this country with love and light and help the people there. Because the president there, he's crazy and he doesn't doesn't understand what he's doing or he doesn't care. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know what it is. Anyway, I'm just asking, please, please remember Venezuela in your prayers every morning, every night, in the middle of the day. When you have a big meal in front of you, thank God for that and be grateful and ask for help. Please, for all the Venezuelans. They're remarkable, amazing people and they don't deserve what's happening to them right now. So the next thing I read about today, which is also kind of a bummer, (laughs) 
Sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, humanity has 100 years left to live. Not really more than that at all. But if you've been following me and you just heard 10 minutes ago what I just said, um, the Schumann resonance is spiking and we're all moving into the fifth dimension. So the third dimension is going to fall away. So anyone who's still stuck there will be transported to another planet or just go with the planet. The way of the dodo bird and the dinosaurs. <laughs> You know, except for chickens, which I'm convinced are still tiny dinosaurs. <laughs> oh, so yeah, that's the news I got today. Some of it good and some of it just strange and not all that great. But when I come back, I have got an incredible story for you. It is another Grandma Marian night. I will be telling you a story that Reverend Marion Jones told to me many years ago. And this story, it's another one. You might as well take off your socks now or the story is going to blow them right off your feet. <laughs> Seriously, the story will knock your socks off again. Grandma Marion was a remarkable woman and taught me a great deal and I wish I would have had five more years with her. You know, I only had a couple years in which I went to visit her in Arizona a couple times a year and uh, I wish I'd had a lot more time because, boy, the stuff she told me, I'm still unraveling some of this stuff in my mind. Like the other day, something she had said to me came into my mind again. I'm like, oh, my God, I'd forgotten about that. It's like, you know, to spend three days with this lady and then every five minutes, there's a whole nother story that's just mind boggling, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I've forgotten more than I've remembered and I've remembered quite a bit. So we still have about after tonight, we'll have about four more Grandma Marian weekends, I think. Maybe more. Mm, yeah, four, possibly five. I could eke it out, but that fifth, you know, five weeks from now, it's going to be like a five-minute story. But it's still something, right? <laughs> but I'm going to take a quick little break. And when I come back on to tonight's Grandma Marion story. Hey you, have you ever thought about having your own podcast like me? Was it even a New Year's resolution? For me, it sure was. But as I've been looking into this for months, I was daunted. There's so many questions I had. When I was trying to get this off the ground, I was wondering, how do I record the episode? How do I get it across all the platforms? How do I get my podcast on Apple podcasts when I don't even have an iPhone. How do I get it onto Spotify and all the other places? How do I get people to listen? And how do I make money from my podcast? How do I edit it? Oh my God. I, all, I had all these questions and I was so confused until I discovered the simple, simple answer is anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free, and it is ridiculously easy to use. And now Anchor can match you with great sponsors, too, so you can get paid to podcast. All you need to do is record it. You don't have to go out and look for people to advertise on your show they help you so basically what I like about podcasting is I don't have to have a video of myself you don't know if my hair is dirty or if I'm still in my pajamas or even if I'm wearing makeup haha <laughs> 
(laughs) And it's so easy. I could do this from the comfort of my own home in my living room using this amazing app right from my cell phone. So easy, right? So if you've always wanted to start your own podcast and make money, by the way, doing it, please go to anchor.fm forward slash start. That is anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters that are already using Anchor. Again, that's anchor.fm forward slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast and I can't wait to favorite you. Woohoo! Let's be bro- let's be broadcast podcast buddies. <laughs> I'll see you there. All right, I'm back. <laughs> I wanted to connect with Reverend Marion Jones, with Grandma Marion. Um, she's here with me. I've connected to her spirit. She and I had a conversation about the story she had told me. She gave me a couple more details I didn't know before. Just really minor details, though. And uh, so I'm going to tell the story to you now. But if you hear something that sounds kind of loud, like gunshots in the background, it's fireworks. <laughs> Somebody is in the park across the way, across the street near the river. And on people's birthdays, they shoot off fireworks. And it's really beautiful and it's fun to watch. So it's pretty cool. But. It's also kind of loud sometimes, so if you hear it, you know what's going on. So without further delay, I'm going to tell you guys a cool story. (laughs) Now, Grandma Marion had lived in a few different places in the United States during her life, and she was in her late 80s when she passed. God rest her soul. (laughs) She's like laughing because she's like right here, not resting at all. I'm sure she's off doing all kinds of work in the universe. She's a spiritual light worker. And more. (laughs) But... Uh, she was living, I think she said somewhere in the South, like Oklahoma or something. That part I wasn't too clear on, but she had been living in the deep South for a while. And there was one sad Saturday where the girls were out to a friend's house. Okay. That's what she just told me. She said, Oh yeah, by the way, the girls that night were out to a friend's house. Uh, She had twin daughters, and I think they were around 12 years old at that time when this happened. So they were out at a friend's house, and so it was just George and Marion, and they decided instead of going out into the community or, you know, out into nature like sometimes they would do, they stayed home and they meditated for six hours together. This was a normal practice for them, but they decided to do this in the afternoon instead of early in the morning or late at night like they normally did. They just decided, let's do a good long meditation. So they raised their vibes really high and they sat together in silence for six hours and they had made, uh, Marion had made a robe for George and then I think she made one for herself. Not the same color, she says. She made him an ocher robe, like um, kind of a, a monk color. It's kind of like a between a yellow and a mustard yellow kind of color. Not quite an orangey, but, you know, it's a very somber, maybe somber or ombre. I don't know. Anyway, 
I know I do. I had a crayon that was this color in my box of Crayola. I, I have held this robe in my hands <laughs> because uh, Grandma Marion had gifted this to my husband when we were there that time. She said, let me go get that robe. She told us a story, this remarkable story. And then she said, let me go get that robe for you before I forget. And she gave the robe to him as a gift. It was incredibly beautiful. I mean, it wasn't just a normal robe. It was like a robe that um, it zipped up in the front. It almost looked like a choir gown, but it was a monk's robe, like a, an official, like, and I can't believe she, was it a Butterick pattern? I'm asking her, Jen, no. <laughs> She's a little laughing. Yeah, Butterick didn't have a pattern for that. <laughs> for anyone who grew up in the 60s and 70s who had people in their family that sewed, you know exactly what I mean when I say Butterick. It's like a pattern. You buy these patterns and anyway, and they're like tissue paper. And if you stepped on them, they would just rip and there goes your pattern. But <laughs> it was like one of those very delicate, careful, the kids and the dogs and the cats and everyone has to be out of the room, you know, to make your, to cut your fabric, to make your pattern and make your clothes. But, um, a lot of people sewed back in the day, so it was easy. I mean, I learned how to sew. I'm not very great at it, but I've made a few things. I've made some things that I felt comfortable wearing in public, <laughs> I'm not a fashion designer, but I, I wouldn't mind being someday. It might be a fun art project someday. <laughs> but um, anyway, Grandma Marion had just meditated on it and figured it out and studied different monks from various cultures. And she came up with this amazing monk's robe for George. And she made one for herself. And the thing is, the reason why you need a heavy robe while you meditate is your body temperature is lowered and it, and it's almost like when you go to sleep your body temperature drops drastically and um is that when you're in meditation that's like one of the things when your body stops hurting and aching and fidgeting and fussing and you're able to really get into it the next thing that happens is your body temperature drops rapidly and then you're just freezing so I wish I would have thought about the idea of a robe. I actually, um, I just had a blanket. That's all I had. <laughs> That's all I've ever meditated with was my uh, blanket, and, and Terrell did too. We just wrap our blankets around us. We put one across our laps and one around our shoulders and sometimes around our heads when it was really cold in the winter time when it was snowing out. But... Um, you know, it's just something that you need if you're a meditator or if you're going to start and you haven't done this. Make sure you have a nice blanket or a good robe with a hoodie because um, it gets cold. It's weird that it happens this way, but it does. When you get up there in the hours, when you're meditating for 20 minutes, it's not that big of a deal. But, you know, I've ever only gone four hours to four and a half hours. But this day on particular... Grandma Marion and George, her husband, they meditated for six hours. So their vibrations were really high. They were really happy, really mellow. And the sun had uh, just started to go down when they finished. And they made dinner. And they ate together. And they had a wonderful evening, nice meal together, quiet without the girls or actually the actually for dinner the girls had come home and so yeah so for the day it was like they were gone and then so the girls had come home they had gone to bed early they finished their dinner they went to bed and George retired to the living room and he got his newspaper and his reading glasses and turned on the TV for company while Marion went into the kitchen and cleaned up and was doing the dishes very traditional family, very traditional, normal night in. But halfway through the dishes, or when when Marion was almost finished with the dishes, all of a sudden she heard in her mind and felt a love energy in her heart, and her spirit told her, her higher self told her this is true. 
she heard a, a man's voice, very distinct, very clear, say in her mind, you have to go to the train station within one hour tonight. Pack one suitcase with clothes. You're going to be gone a while. And Grandma Marion was no stranger to hearing messages and following them. She had given her spirit over to the one will. And things happen when you do that. You'll get messages. You'll get, you know, signs and signals and messages. And things start to happen in your life. And this was no different for her. But this story is beyond anything. I have had things similar to like this happen, but to this extent, never. This is why I think when I speculate that if she wasn't a master, she was definitely a saint on her way to self mastery. Like she doesn't think she was a master, but I don't know. I mean, she was on her way to it when she passed. I mean, she followed that inner intuition and that voice, but what she heard literally was a voice that night in her head. So she rinsed off the last dish, dried her hands on her dish rag, and hung it up to dry. And she went in and she said, Okay, so George, um, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> <laughs> she probably didn't say it in those. She was a more formal person than me. <laughs> She's just walked in and she said, George, I have to go to the train station. I just had a psychic message by spirit sent to me. And then, and he's like, well, what did the message say? <laughs> like what, what, <laughs> you know, he's like, okay, I'll get, I'll get the car ready. Get your, you pack your bag. And she said, well, the message said, come to the train station within an hour. The tickets will be waiting there for you. Or the tickets will be w- waiting there for you. Pack a suitcase. It's going to be a while. You're going to be a while. And George said, okay. We have to trust that this is real and this is right and this is good and if we get there and there's no ticket, then we just know you're off your rocker, you know, like basically, <laughs> you know, but he knew that she was always, you know, she was a psychic and she was telepathic and she was a white witch of West Virginia. <laughs> As I told you a couple of weeks ago on a grandma Marion story night. So she did, she went in and she hugged and kissed the girls. She had the neighbor come over to watch the girls for the time that George is going to be gone to drop her off at the train station. And she packed her bag and she put on her coat and her scarf and just didn't know what the heck to expect. Pure blind faith. So Grandma Marion or Reverend Marion Jones she wasn't a reverend yet actually in this day in this time in the 60s she was Marion Jones Mrs. Marion Jones that was it when this happened she was just at that point basically a housewife she wasn't a reverend yet she didn't have a church yet George wasn't a minister yet he had a normal job You know, so (laughs) just a normal family, but very deeply spiritual. It's possible George was a master, if not just a saint, but he was on his way as well to masterhood. He was a very quiet person. I never met him. He had passed before I was there. I did meet him once during a near-death experience. I will talk about that someday. (laughs) <laughs> I was so happy to see him and I recognized him. I was like, oh my God, George. And um, I knew him from heaven, so it was cool to see him. But anyway, um, he went on in faith too. They lived their lives 
on faith, pure trust of divine. So they got to the train station and, and Mary grabbed her, her suitcase and tightened her coat around her waist a little more and straightened up her scarf and her gloves and made sure she was presentable because she had no idea what to expect. You know, she probably gave a one little, hey, George, do I look okay? And he probably said, yeah, you look great. And he kissed her goodbye and he said he loved her. And he said, well, when you get to where you're going, let me know. <laughs> and I'll come get you if I have to and I'll come and be with you and we'll figure it out. So George waited with her and she was just standing there with her suitcase and what appeared to be out of literally nowhere, this little man appeared. He was about five foot six, maybe. He was just normal build, maybe a little bit on the skinny side. And he was wearing white shoes shiny white shoes and white pants and a white shirt and a white coat. It was just like a white suit, not like a tuxedo. I'm asking Marion as I go along. So he was wearing like a white suit, like a white tie, white shirt, white coat, even a white pocket square coming out of the pocket and shiny white shoes and white pants and a white hat. And, and it was just like a normal man's hat at the time. It wasn't like a, a fez or a fedora or a turban or something that was ethnic, but the man himself never uttered one word. And as near as Marion could tell, the way she said, she said, I don't know where he was from. But he felt foreign, but now looking back, I don't think... She's like, I don't even know where he was from. And she just kind of gave me a look, and I kind of felt like maybe she meant he appeared human, but maybe was an angel otherworldly, supernatural. There was something strange about this guy. But not strange in a weird or bad way, not in a way that would make her go, "Uh, let's go back home, George. This was a mistake. You know? (laughs) But he showed up in this all-white suit with white shoes and a white hat and gloves, white gloves, by the way, and smiled at her and looked her in the eye and she felt a sense of peace wash over her as if he was an angel. And she said, you know, it's weird. He looked almost like he was from India, like he is Indian, but it was an American made or style suit. And she almost wondered if he even spoke English. Because he didn't say a word to her. He just smiled and he had bright white teeth and a big smile. And it made her feel at ease immediately. And he handed her a white envelope. And she opened the white envelope. And inside that white envelope was a ticket to Colorado. And she said, well, guess where I'm going, George? (laughs) I'm going to Colorado. (laughs) So. (laughs) George hugged her and wished her luck, said he was going to pray for her. 
and he said he would try to bring the girls and join her in a couple weeks after she got the lay of the land and saw what was happening, what was going on. Because she had no idea who is this, this random guy who's not even saying hello. And he's wearing all white with white gloves. I mean, he was missing the white angel wings, but he might have been an angel. He shows up randomly with a paid ticket to Colorado by train (laughs) in the 1960s. And she's like, okay. Because spirit told her to go. And she never questioned higher self. And that was one lesson she absolutely stressed to me. She said, when you work for divine, when you work for the one will, when he tells you what to do, you do it. You don't question. Never question spirit. Always trust with pure faith. If he's going to bring you to it, he's going to pull you through it. Basically. So my mom used to always say. If God will bring you to it, he will pull you through it. So, okay. (laughs) So, Grandma Marion hops aboard the train, excited and nervous and super curious. Can you imagine being in this position? You're sitting on a train and you're on the way to Colorado and you know it's going to be like four days on the train, possibly. And you don't know who you're going to meet on the other end. You have no idea who it is, what's happening. And by the way, after the guy handed her the ticket and she opened the envelope and looked at the ticket and said, guess where I'm going, George. She handed the ticket to George and he looked and she turned back around to ask questions of the guy in white. And he was nowhere to be found. Boop. <laughs> He just disappeared into thin air, Mama. He was gone. Thin air. Boom. That was weird. (laughs) Oh, so she gets on the train, and that was it. So she gets to (laughs) her destination, finally, days later. Gets to the destination, gets to... The train station gets off the train and said, and thought, well, what the hell do I do now? Where do I go? What? Uh, what? So she's looking around and there's nobody there. And she's like, what, what do I do? And she prayed. She's like, God, you sent me here. <laughs> Is this like a vacation and I'm going home now or like what, you know? And so she closed her eyes for a couple minutes to pray. And when she opened her eyes, boop, (laughs) guess who was right in front of her? And when I just said that, someone just hugged me. Ooh, and I feel like arms around my neck right now. Ooh, I haven't ever felt this before oh I get the weirdest things that happen during this podcast I swear to God I don't know it's not Grandma Marion because she's sitting in front of me and she's looking at me like I don't know Um, who's here with me oh it's my twin flame usually when people come to visit you from heaven by the way they don't hug you around the neck you don't feel anything on your body except your feet your hands and above the neck is the only place where people can touch you. If you feel someone touching you that doesn't feel like a good touch, it's probably a not good spirit. If they touch you anywhere other than your hands, feet, or your uh, head and neck. But, oh, I feel my twin. He's hugging me. Thank you, twin. Thank you, twinsy. I want him so much in my life. He's not in my life right now. I don't know uh, who he is, where he's at. I know he's got lovely brown eyes. <sighs> I'm in a world of brown-eyed people. And I haven't met him yet. I don't think he's here. I think he's from the States, which is weird and ironic. But I don't know. 
Your twin doesn't always look like you, by the way, and so otherwise my twin would have green eyes, but I've seen his eyes, and he's got brown eyes. And they're lovely, and I want to see them in person. Ooh, it feels so weird. He's hugging me. Oh, I love this feeling. I'm hugging him back while I'm saying the rest of the story. Okay, so let's get back to the story. So Grandma Marion was in Colorado, and she said a quick prayer. <laughs> like, please, God, help me here because I don't know what I'm doing, where I'm going. And boop. <laughs> She opens her eyes, and there's a man standing before her. And you've guessed it. White shoes, white pants, white tie, white shirt, white coat, white hat, white gloves. (laughs) In this time, he's smiling with his white teeth showing, and he nods to her, never says a word, picks up her bag, and motions with the follow me hand. You know what I mean? That gesture, that kind of, come on, come on. So he put his hand in a motion of like a half, like a half circle. You know what I'm talking about? Come on, follow me. So she followed him to a car. And he opened the door for her, put her bag in the trunk, and shut the door and she was in the back seat like he was a chauffeur and then she's like oh well that makes sense he's the chauffeur and then she's like wait a minute why would he fly all the way or or take a train all the way just to hand me a ticket and then he wasn't even on the train by the way because I forgot to mention that she did get up and walk around because she's like well wait a minute isn't this guy going to Colorado with me and she looked all over the train and he was nowhere to be found and he never said a word And then he just appeared again, and he had a car. And he brought her, oh, 20 minutes outside the city. And went up a long, narrow driveway up a hill. And there were some trees, not a lot of trees. It was up way up in the mountains, outside of Denver, I think. And, or maybe Boulder. And anyway, she was getting a little scared. Not scared, scared, but nervous. Anxious, I would have to say. Anxious, maybe in a good way, but also like, who has the audacity to contact me by telepathy, pay for a ticket assuming I'm going to do it, and then just, you know, have this guy who won't say a word to me take, I mean, it was like kind of strange, right? So anyway, she gets up to the uh, top of (laughs) the long skinny road, dirt road, and like kind of driveway, And there's, like, this big house. This huge house. Like a mansion. And she's like, okay. (laughs) It's getting a little better and more curious. Curiouser and curiouser. (laughs) So she follows the guy. He goes and gets, gets out of the car and he opens the door and she gets out and she's taking it all in and breathing in the fresh, crisp, amazing mountain air that is in Colorado. And she's just looking all around like, wow, whoa. <laughs> like she's entered another dimension for sure. <laughs> and so this guy gets her suitcase out the back and does another follow me motion. And she walks with him and he just smiles and he rings a doorbell And he doesn't even go in the house. He just rings the doorbell and drops her suitcase off and just kind of tips his hat to her and goes back into the car and drives away. But it seems like he didn't drive away all the way, like he just disappeared again. Because she didn't hear the car after a couple seconds. It was just like, boop. (laughs) And now the man and the car are gone. She saw them go over the hill, but then didn't hear anything after. And it just seemed to her that there would have been a sound, you know? So it was all very mysterious. But she went along with it, and these people opened the door. 
And they said, oh, oh, we're so glad you're here. We're so glad you're here. Welcome, welcome. Come on, come on in, come on in. And she's like, yeah, I'm Marion Jones. And I, and they're like, oh, yeah, we know. We already know about it. It's okay. Come on in. And she's like, oh, this is weird. She's like, well, do you know what's going on? And they're like, no, not really. We'll find out tonight, though. And she's like, okay. And she was there kind of in the morning, like around 11-ish. And so she said, and they said, we'll find out around dinner time tonight. And so she's like, okay, what is this place? And they're like, oh, well, we're students. Okay. This is a school. And they said, yeah, yeah, of, of sorts. It's a school. It's a school. You'll, you'll find out more tonight. Just enjoy the grounds. Walk around. Enjoy your day. They showed her to her room. She had her own room in this mansion slash school. So she kind of took a nap and called George and said, okay, I landed. I'm here. I don't know what the hell is going on. You know, I'm at this place. I'm in this beautiful mansion in the mountains and they knew I was coming, but the person who summoned me is not here and he will be here tonight at dinner time. And after dinner, I guess I'll talk to him. <laughs> It was very, very mysterious. This whole thing was so freaking weird and mysterious, but she loved it. She thrived for stuff like this, so she <laughs> she just decided, let's do it. So she spent time, you know, walking around, meditated, and got her things unpacked, put her suitcase in the closet, and hung up her clothes and freshened up. And went to dinner, and at during the dinner, a man walked in. Just a normal guy, really tall, though, and really compelling blue eyes. And she remembered that about him for sure, you know? Like, that was, like, the first thing that was popped out at her. And he said, welcome. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you can make it. And she's like, thank you. And he's, you know, enjoy, enjoy the dinner. They all had dinner together. Uh, several students over 20, but less than 30. So what are you saying about 25, 26, 26, including you. Okay. So she's saying, she says she thinks there's like around 26 people, including her. So it was a pretty, it was like a grand, like a banquet hall type of room in this huge mansion. And, marble floors and hardwood you know banisters and wooden walls and just paneling in the walls but it was like maple it was like upper scale gorgeous so at the end of the dinner and they had like um, a sing along and they did a little bit of chanting and then everyone was like released for the night And Marion was called by the master of the home, the owner of the school. And he said, let's retire to my study. And he brought her into this huge office and shut the door and said, you know, go ahead, have a seat. And he sat behind his desk and he said, I am Doriel. And this is my school, the Brotherhood of the White Temple. Now, if any of you guys have ever heard of the Emerald Tablets of South the Atlantean, and it's all over the internet now, you never would have heard of that if it hadn't been for Doriel who discovered these tablets and brought them forth into the world. And they were written by Hermes Trismegistus, the thrice-born man, who was also Thoth the Atlantean. And he was from Atlantis, and there's a whole connection there. And I'm going to go into the Emerald Tablets and Thoth on another day, possibly more than another day, possibly two or three other days, because there's a lot of information and material there. 
but that was it. <laughs> I have summoned you. He literally said, she said, why have you summoned me? He literally summoned her. And he said, well, I have summoned you telepathically and you got my message and that, and you got to the station and you got the ticket. So I know you're ready for this. And she's like, what am I ready for? He said, you are to study with me. And under my tutelage, you will live here and I will pay for everything. Don't worry. But you're going to be my assistant and you're going to help me. And you're going to learn everything I know. And someday, you're going to take over to this school. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Oh, my God. She about fell off her chair. She was tickled. <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? You summon me by telepathy, and you have a guy show up with the ticket. He doesn't say a word. I think he might be an angel. He disappears. He appears. He disappears. He appears again. He disappears again. Like, what? What? This was one of the most incredible of her stories. They were all incredible stories, to be honest with you. But this story just blew my mind. And she says, well, you know, I have a life and I got a husband and I got my kids. And he goes, oh, yeah, that's fine. Um, in two weeks time, they will be allowed to come. And she's like, well, it's going to take George about two to three weeks to get everything packed and ready to go. But the girls are off school soon. So, yeah, you know, sure. I could stay maybe for the summer. And he goes, well, you're going to be with me for a while. And y'all are able to move with me if you want. Or, you know, your husband and daughters can still stay there. And you can visit them sometimes. They can visit you. But, you know, you're going to live with me. And would you know it? Uh, Grandma Marion ended up living there over two years with Doriel and studied under him directly. And if you're wondering, he was not just merely a saint. He was an advanced spiritual master avatar. How else would he know everything? about her of course she got there how would he even know about her period like I said she was just a housewife she wasn't a reverend no one had the internet back in the 60s <laughs> TV was pretty much localized there was a national news the national evening news but most TV was just localized it's not like a random housewife would be on the news in Colorado from Oklahoma or wherever in the South she lived at the time. It's crazy stuff, right? I will tell you another Grandma Marion story next week. I don't know which one. We have a few left. But this is not the end of your hearing about Doriel. This is just the end of the Doriel and the train station story. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. That's all I got to say tonight about that. But, um, there you go. And there is your dose of Reverend Marion Jones stories for the week. Thank you for listening. If you have any messages or comments about this or any of my episodes, this is number 52, so you have a lot to comment on. Feel free to send me a message directly at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical. I will put it on the air if you wish me to. <laughs> Contact me about being on the show if you even want to do an episode with me. It'd be super fun. I have a couple people in mind. Uh, we're going to have Mason Adams 
coming back on sometime in the future, near future. We've been emailing every now and again. And, uh, yeah, we're gonna, gonna have a lot of fun things coming up, a lot of fun shows. So I wanted to thank you. Thank you for your time, for listening to my podcast and for just sitting back and enjoying as you listen to it, because that's what I'm trying to make, trying to build something that is fun to listen to, gives you something fun to think about. And sometimes I give you some really remarkable stories, right? This one still blows my mind and I've known it for years and it's just still just what blows my mind. So I hope that you have a lovely rest of your weekend. I have no idea what we're going to do tomorrow, but I'll be back here tomorrow. Unless this spider gets me. (laughs) Hopefully he won't, but you know. Yeah, I'm a little, a little worried about this dude. <laughs> he had something on his back that looked kind of like a black widow mark, but it wasn't red. It was like golden and it almost looked like a Gemini symbol. What it means, I don't know. I do know that I'm freaking out about it a little bit. And right when I said that, my right ear suddenly got extremely clear and I could hear perfectly. So, (sighs) boy, the, the things that happen while I'm on doing my podcast, I saw an angel wing, just a glimpse of it in my room a second ago. And also when we started the podcast and this angel's hanging out with Marion and she's still with me. (laughs) I don't know, guys. Ooh. <laughs> Some of this stuff's giving me the chills, and I still feel my twin with me, and I feel very warm from him. I feel a lot of love and warmth energy. Ha. That's good. That's a good sign. It's a good, good sign. And speaking of sign, my darlings, <laughs> I love you all very much. But I am signing off (laughs) with peace and joy and the high vibes of the holy fifth dimension. Until next time, guys. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you.